Well, joining us on the show now, we have another one of the talented comedians from this year's Melbourne International Comedy Festival. Welcome to the program, Callum, and you are here to tell us all about your brilliant new show called Oops. So welcome to the show. Oh, thank you very much. Well, that's a fantastic introduction. Thank you, Dave. I appreciate that. And yeah, yeah, oops, oops or oops, whichever one you like. Um, and yeah, on, yeah, this year's Melbourne Comedy Festival. I can't wait. Now, mate, I saw you at the Comedy Festival the last time it was on, before the whole pandemic thing, and you put on an absolutely amazing show. So what have you got in store for people this year? So, yeah, this year, oh, thank you, first of all. I really appreciate that. And um, so this year, it's, 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 I'm steering my style in like a little bit of a different direction. Underneath, it sort of deals with similar themes, like uh, this year's show is all about... Um, um, perfectionism and what I call a rejection of perfectionism. So it's a show about mistakes and just sort of uh, embracing them in a way and um, learning that really, like, just it's really teaching myself. Really, my shows end up being like sort of therapy for myself in, in a way and uh, teaching myself that you know, like, mistakes are part of life and they're going to happen. And it's very personal. Like, I'm do I've written a lot of the stuff I've written in there are true life events and things that I care about a lot and things that have happened to me and I'm just trying to spin them and making them. Again, my style has changed a little bit. I'm going to make it more surreal. Um, uh, very, yeah, again, the material is very introspective and hopefully, again, very relatable to the audience. You always want to have a bit of uh, sprinkle a lot of relatability in your show because the audiences um, need to hang their hat on something and uh, you just want to uh, provide them with uh, something they can uh, identify with and relate to and it's yeah so in terms of style similar like sketch comedy musical comedy bit of stand-up as well but again I'm probably going more balls to the wall more uh, more fun more surreal more silly and yeah that sort of stuff. Now, oops is a word that we hear a lot in my family because I have an extremely clumsy wife and also father-in-law. <laughs> I have um, seen my father-in-law sit in his own dinner when it's been sitting on the couch before and yeah. my wife normally wears more food than she eats when we're in a restaurant. <laughs> same, so, same. So it at, is, the table, at the table as well. Yeah, <laughs> so it is a word that we hear quite often in our family. What kind of mistakes are you talking about in this show? Um, I mean, one of the ones I'll give you an example of is last year I I worked at uh, the exhibition centre just to help out with the vaccine rollout, and we're on a lunch break. We're all sitting um, uh, just uh, along the Arrow River, and I had AirPods in my pocket in their case, and they just slipped out, and uh, they are now living at the bottom of the Arrow River, and that is the title of this one of the songs in the show, um, all about how I dropped my AirPods at the Arrow River and there are lots of Yarra River jokes in there um, and um, yeah so stuff like that life events like that let me just have a look at my other things like uh, second um, like uh, like a song like so one thing I I, um, I didn't really learn much in school I'm not sure if you did but just to how we're in school, we were never really taught that, you know, mistakes happen, mistakes are a part of life and everything. So I've written like a children's style song that educates kids uh, on mistakes, but it's also very fun for an adult audience as well. So that's in there. Um, I also play a very, very bad uh, entertainer. Um, again, it's right. It's like a little bit of cringe, but like a right amount of laughs in there. Like of actually, and like of him, you just can't get anything right. Like I try to parody a comedian's Tonight Show act but it just all just falls apart and it goes wrong. Very, again, very classically inspired by Steve Martin or something like that. One of the, like the old school uh, comedians or like another part, another uh, example would be um, uh, just some guy, like uh, uh, some guy trying to flirt and he's just, mess we call them in the, the, the proper comedic term for it is malapropism, but yep. it's when you, um, when you uh, mix up a word with something else. So like you're, you're trying to say something, but you've completely messed up the pronunciation or the spelling and something else comes out. And then when you're often, often trying to impress someone when you're out and about or something like that, your words tend to stumble out and you just, and so you say some things that you know what you mean. So stuff like that, again, hopefully uh, uh, very uh, relatable and um, like, uh, yeah, like parroting, uh, like again, listing of things, parroting news anchors, 
um, like their sort of corniness and and uh, and um, like stuff like that, and like all of, like some of the, the the funny, yeah, as you said with your with your wife, I've got a song about like um, all the the funny flaws or the funny um, uh, imperfections that your partner has as well. So you mentioned Steve Martin there. Was that a comedian that you grew up watching? Is he one of the reasons why you ended up becoming a comedian yourself? Um, he was actually one I actually got into rec- uh, when I say recently, in the last couple of years. I read his, he's got an amazing book called uh, Born Standing Up. Every Everyone should read it, but especially if you're a performer. It is just like the ultimate guide on how to live as a performer and how he did it as a performer and he gives you such a great insight to all these um tips and tricks but um uh it's it's until yeah steve he's i just admire his comfort he's does these commitments to bits his his confidence that he has on stage and his style it's very postmodern, and he plays again that very like He's, 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 his persona is, again, a bad entertainer, and he's, he just really um, uh, really sells it up on stage, and he's such a confident man. And someone like who I would grow, I would have grown up with, a better example would have been someone like a Rowan Atkinson. I was introduced to him to a, for, um, in a, a, a very young age, um, um, like Mr. Bean watch, uh, watching when I was very young, but also now later uh, in my in while in, in no more currently, I've watched his stage stuff with some in some ways completely different from Mr. Bean, but it has um, just amazing jo- uh, comedy writing and physicality, which I try to incorporate into my act too. Awesome. Well, like I said before, one of the things I loved about your show was how relatable it was. When something happens in your everyday life, do you know instantly that that's going to become part of your next show? Uh, no, but sometimes it does. The one with the Yarra River, uh, dropping my earphones to the Yarra, I knew straight away. I went, as soon as I got home from work, I started, I'm like, this has got to go in the show. Um, some of them, but then some, some of them I've actually, with this show, I've actually just fully reflected in my whole life. And I've, I've, I've pulled out events that have happened when I was 12. I'm like, oh, like this was, it's sort of like I started writing the show when I was completely young. I was like, I've got some, so much material here that is just like perfect. Um, for it and um, for example another one uh, uh, yeah it's sort of 50 50 some does some um, things that happen in my life uh, you know like straight away I'm like yes that's got to go on the show and some I like you know I'm remembering back to 12 years ago or like a couple of years ago I was like oh why didn't I think of that um, another example is uh, recently I when I did the return of my last year's show I had it properly perfect, professionally filmed um, and was going to release like just bits and pieces on you know Instagram TikTok etc and uh, unfortunately the footage was all lost and um, so I couldn't uh, that was all gone so uh, I've got a bit I'm like okay as soon as I said that I'm like I was pretty devastated but at the same time like okay what can I do with that so I've got a new bit in my in the new show where i'm going to try i'm going I'm to i don't want to spoil anything again but like i'm going to do i'm going to talk about that and do a, a sketchy sort of thing that's uh sort of makes fun of uh me losing my footage from the from the first show but you have to see what it is i don't want to give away too much awesome well callum we cannot wait to head along and see your show and for all the listeners out there you can grab tickets to callum's show on the comedy festival website his show runs from the 11th to the 23rd of april 5 30 each day now we'll put a link up there on our website as well to where you can grab those tickets from and all the information about the show will be up there but before we go callum what would you like to say to everybody out there who are thinking about heading along to check out your show uh I'll probably just say that it's super like come out come to sit melbourne's comedy scene is just absolutely skyrocketing after the after the pandemic um it's uh, my show if i want my show, my show specifically, it's um, I like to think it's relatable. Uh, it's got lots of surprises. I it's, I really wanted to make it as unpredictable as possible. But at the most, like it's 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 just lots and lots of fun, lots of punchlines, and um, yeah, if you um, consider yourself like so, someone that's hard on yourself, like me, someone like for example, when I was playing, uh, if I was playing like any, doing any like sports when I was younger, I'd make like I'd make, um, I'd carry on so much. I'd make Nick Curios look like the Dalai Lama. Like it was just <laughs> ridiculous. And I'm sure, and if in everyday life, if you drop a 
drop a spoon in the fridge, you're like you're calling every you're calling every yourself every name under the sun. So it's 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 for those people, you know, it's it's for, it's for everyone. But like, if you're if you're hard on yourself like me, like it's really gonna hit home. Definitely. Well, for everybody out there again, Callum's show is on from the 11th to the 23rd of April during the Comedy Festival. All the details are up on our website. And if you're listening to this on the podcast, on Spotify or any of those channels, just have a look down below where you found the actual podcast and you will see all of those dates and a link from where you can get the tickets as well. Callum, thank you so much for taking the time to chat to us today. It's been an honor having you on the show and I can't wait out can't wait to check out your next show as well. Thank you so much. Absolute pleasure talking to you. I loved it. Thank you so much, Dave. Thank you.